Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hello, I'm Mario Tanaguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast. My guest today on Calgary's podcast is El Ray, who is a fine artist and art gallery owner in Calgary. Thanks uh, for joining us today, El. Hi, thank you. Well, let me just start by asking you just a little bit about what you do uh, uh, in terms of art, and uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, sounds great. All right. So, um, what kind of things uh, do you do when it comes to the work, uh, artwork? I do everything from large scale abstracts to small abstract paintings, portraits, and even murals. And when, so, did you, when did you start doing this? I started painting as a career eleven years ago. I've always been an artist. My grade three teacher told me when I was eight years old that I would be a successful artist one day. And she told me to invite her to my art show when that happened. So I did, this is about three years ago, and she showed up and she brought a sketchbook that I did when I was eight years old. Oh, and wow. I hadn't talked to her in 25 years. Oh, okay. So tell me yeah. a, a little bit about that. Well, like, where did that, uh, I guess, passion for art come from? It's just always been there. It's been something that comes easy to me and something that helps me get through life. I'm able to express myself. I get validation. I get to tell my story in my own way. Mm -hmm. And did you, um, you know, when it comes to art, are, are there anything in particular that you like to focus on uh, subject material or is it just a, a lot of different things? It's a lot of different things. And sometimes it's really deep and sometimes it's not at all. It's more aesthetic. But um, this Oveda series, which you can see the beginning of this painting behind me, is a story of rebirth. An oval is a symbol of rebirth. So Ovedus is the Latin word for oval. Uh -huh. And I feel like there's times in your life where things get really hard and it can either break you down or you can rise above. And that's where the rebirth comes. Okay. So, then. yeah, sometimes it's really deep and meaningful to me and other people can relate to it. And it just, it's an oval, you know, <laughs> but yeah. it, it has a lot more to it. And it looks great in a space that it, it has that feeling that comes from me in it. And people say that they feel that too. Ah, and I yeah. see. I see Sean Connery and Jane Bond behind you. Oh, there. Yeah. Sometimes I like doing things that are more nostalgic, memories, that kind of thing. My grandma used to watch 007 and loved it. So <laughs> one of those things, yeah. So, um, you know, where's your art um, shown? And uh, uh, where is it, I guess, uh, uh, for people? Downtown Calgary. It's by appointment only. It's on 10th Ave, Southwest, 18th Street. And I have my art splayed across two floors in that building. And um, I do a lot of art shows and fundraisers. So mm -hmm. I try to do at least one per year of each, but sometimes more. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. who's typically uh, the people that uh, buy your art? It's a variety of different people from all around the world. So. Yeah, it's everything, everybody. Just people relate to my art and want it, and then they buy it. So, um, you know, when uh, uh, you're looking at uh, your artwork over the years, uh, I'll like, uh, is there one piece that you that you always remember as, like, the piece that you've sold? I don't feel like it's the piece, but it's a series that I started with and I still continue with. I have a little painting here if you want me to show you. Yeah. Yeah. It's this water series. Sorry. It goes like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last year I was in Atlantis, Bahamas with my daughter. And there's a lot of these turquoise waters. So that's a memory for me. My previous works were more darker blues, like the lakes. Because my grandma, I mentioned her again. She mm -hmm. had a cabin there that we would go to in the summer. And I have a lot of lake memories. And I used to scuba dive too. So I just love oh, 
I love that feeling of being around water, being immersed in water. I want to bring that into somebody's space, including my own. So, that, so, did, so yeah. does this all come naturally to you, or uh, did you also take some lessons? No, I'm completely self-taught. I just decided this is what I was going to do, and I made sure that it was going to happen. And I'm just fortunate that I can be here. 11 years later, still in the game as a successful career artist in Canada. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just one of those things that I just had a knowing. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, you know, when uh, when you look at uh, the art uh, from, from way back when, uh, say when you were a kid, what kind of things did you like to draw? Animals. Uh -huh. There's always animals and faces. That was my thing. I loved going to the zoo and drawing animals. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and sorry, and your gallery, how long has it been open? It's been around since September. It's a fairly new thing that I've done. So, um, yeah, it's a new venture for me. I've been represented by galleries in the past, but I decided to do my own thing. Okay, then. When it comes to art, is there anything that you uh, are interested in doing that you haven't done yet? Oh, that's a great question. Um, no, I can't think of anything specifically that I haven't done. I, I guess be represented in galleries around the world maybe is my next thing that I'm going for. So I think we'll go there. <laughs> All right. Go big. Well, tell me a, a little bit about um, being an entre uh, entrepreneur. Like, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, I don't know if you know uh, Paul Van Ginkle at all. Um, uh, Paul's an artist in Calgary uh, and a, a friend of mine. And uh, I remember him years ago telling me that he really had <laughs> two jobs, right? He had the job of being an artist. And then he had the job of, uh, of, um, of, uh, of, uh, I guess, being a business owner. Like, uh, uh, how do you juggle those two? Well, it takes a lot of confidence and you have to understand sales. You have to be able to market yourself. You have to have the confidence to go into a room and just talk about your art and your dream and your passion. To everybody so it's all it is a lot there's the art side where i can just be in the studio and get lost but then as you said there's the business side of it too so i have to do my own accounting my own advertising marketing my own production for the art shows and putting together the ideas and there's a lot of back-end stuff that people don't see What about on a personal scale uh, the, in terms of uh, art? Uh, do you have any uh, any people, uh, any artists that you look up to or uh, any uh, types of art that uh, over the years that you've fondly uh, become uh, attached to, I guess? I feel like I haven't done that just because I want to set my own bar and not be trying to chase somebody else's bar. So I do like a lot of artists and I I think it's amazing what they're doing, but I don't like to compare myself to other people or to try to aspire to be like them. I try to just stay in my little box so that I draw inspiration from myself. Mm -hmm. Where does the inspiration come from, like usually for you? It's everything. So it can be personal experiences that are really deep and meaningful for me and they're therapeutic, like the Oval series. I feel it's very therapeutic for me. The water is memories from when I was young to last year when I was with my daughter. And um, just movies that I like watching, huh. everything. It's, it's it's just this broad spectrum of inspiration. Okay. And, and what, never, sorry, what was that? It never stops. Like yeah. I, I'm never lacking for inspiration. Oh, interesting. So when yeah. you're uh, uh, you're in the uh, uh, doing the actual uh, you know uh, art, 
like uh, do you have specific times uh, like how do you how do you do that like do you do you set yourself like a schedule that this is when i'm going to do it or is just as it flexible it it is uh, a finicky thing to work with because you can't just put yourself in the studio and get to work you have to be feeling a certain way in order to produce beautiful art i feel like when i'm not feeling right my art never turns out the way I want it to. It just, it's the biggest struggle and it never looks good. So I have to really work on making sure that my head's right and I'm feeling good and then I can start to create. Hmm, interesting. And, yeah. and when you're doing uh, your creations, uh, what kind of a mood or setting are you in? Uh, like, as you listen to music, uh, like, uh, is it, uh, <laughs> maybe explain that for me. Well, I actually have a shaman that told me that I needed to have a dark space with crystals. So I have a crystal chandelier in my studio with black walls, black ceiling, and um, a chaise couch. And uh, it's just this place where it's like um, if you have earplugs in, like it's that there's no distractions. Yes. It's just black and it's also beautiful. So that is the perfect setting for me. And I always play random music where it's anything from rock to um, death metal to rap to <laughs> um, dance, like old school stuff, everything, 90s, you name it. I listen to it all. Does it does it depend on what you're uh, creating, uh, the type of music that you're going to be listening to? No, I just like the randomness of it. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, you know when uh, you're when you're creating, uh, um, you know, what would you say? I, I guess what would you say your advice would be to say young artists uh, that maybe have a dream uh, and 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 want to be an artist. Uh, what would you tell them? What advice would you give them? First, you have to believe in yourself and you can't stop. You have to just keep creating no matter what. Just keep going. Keep getting your ideas out there. Don't take no for an answer and pound the pavement. Like I made sure that I was putting in commissions all the time. Submissions, sorry. Submissions to be a part of every art show that I could find. Just so that I could get the exposure that I needed. And I would create my own art shows if there wasn't an art show that I could be a part of. So it's just doing whatever it takes to get where you want to go. Mm. Yeah. On a yeah. personal on a personal level, Elle, what uh, uh, what else do you do that uh, uh, you have interest in outside of uh, uh, your art? When it's not snowy and cold, I love riding my motorcycle, and I'll take it out into the mountains. And I'll wear a bikini underneath and go for a swim in a lake and I'll get my inspiration in Mother Nature. And I also feel like riding a motorcycle is therapy. So it just kind of gets rid of whatever I'm feeling and then I can go into the studio and paint. How long have you been riding a bike? Seven years. Oh, okay. And what? Uh, how did you start riding a bike? Like what was the story there? <laughs> <laughs> I used to dirt bike when I was 10 years old. I started on a 50cc Honda and that's where I got my confidence. And then my father always had motorcycles growing up. So I was always around them riding on the back. And it's just something that I absolutely love from a very young age and decided that I wanted to do as an adult. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Anything, anything else that, uh, <laughs> that you do uh, 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 from interest sake outside of your work? I I'm a homebody so I do love puzzling I hang out with my children a lot I have two girls and we like to travel so we'll do everything from Kananaskis and Banff to Atlantis or Disneyland like yeah. I just love spending time with them and painting so I'm just pretty much a homebody yeah do you <laughs> yeah. do you find that it's important to have those other things uh out there, whether it's motorcycle riding, uh, that that you're not just like 100% focused on 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 the uh, art. 
Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because um, you need a fresh pair of eyes on the artwork that you're working on. So you need to clear your head in whatever capacity that is. For me, it's the extreme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm, so I'm curious, how long does it usually take for a piece of art? I have one painting that I've been working on since 2013. Yeah. So some just don't come together the way I want them to right out the gate. And some take a month. Usually, on average, I'd say anywhere between two to seven months. <laughs> I know it sounds really like crazy, but it's one of those things that I just can't push or re reach a deadline because then it messes up the creativity. And then there's so much that goes on in my life that dictates whether it comes through or not. And then I'm working on 20 pieces at once. So mm. they get shuffled in order as to what's more important than others. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All righty. And uh, yeah. you're, uh, you're born and raised here in Calgary? Yes. Yeah. Born and raised. Oh, okay then. And uh, uh, did you, uh, what high school did you go to? Just Bishop Carroll. Carroll. Oh, you went to Carroll. So independent learning school, right? <laughs> and I failed grade 10 art and I never looked back to had it until I turned 25. So oh, really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hated being told what to create with what materials because they tell you to make a box, make a shadow, make a cube, do this. And it just didn't interest me at all. So I failed. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's been interesting. I guess sometimes schools uh, put you in a certain way of learning, and uh, and uh, uh, you know, that's not uh, it's not a solution for everybody, right? Everybody's different, and uh, well, that's uh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Do your kids uh, do it as well? Or yeah, my oldest actually was in one of my art shows with three paintings when she was four years old. She she begged me to be in the show and I told her you have to start at the bottom at $200 a piece. And she said, no, my number is four. I'm like 400. And she's like, yes. So she sold out. She made $1,200 oh. at age of four on three paintings. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah. Superb. Pretty cool. Yeah. So she, if you could see my house, it's covered in crafts and pictures and drawings, pencils, paint, like there's a lot of creativity in this song. Oh, excellent. All yeah. right. All right, Elle, I appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk to me today. Well, thank you. All right. That was Elle Ray, who is fine artist and art gallery owner in Calgary. I'm Mario Tanaguzzi, managing editor of Canada's podcast. This is Calgary's podcast. Thanks for joining us today.